Now, much has been made of how this DNC has been trying to recapture the hope of Obama's 2008 run, but if you want real political fantasia, you have to look a little further back in time. To 1999, when Aaron Sorkin's series The West Wing hit the airwaves with its famous walk and talks, its dynamic, fast-paced scripts, and soaring political optimism. Here's just one clip to remind us when actor Martin Sheen was president. There's a promise that I ask everyone who works here to make. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful and committed citizens can change the world. You know why? It's the only thing that ever has. Seems like a long time ago, but a new book is going behind the scenes called What's Next? A Backstage Pass to the West Wing. Its cast and crew and its enduring legacy of service. And I'm joined now by one of its authors, the West Wing alum Melissa Fitzgerald, as well as President Bartlett himself, the multi-award winning actor Martin Sheen. Welcome both of you to the program. It really does seem appropriate to be able to talk about this and your legacy, the program's legacy, right in the middle of this convention. Um, because, as o Michelle Obama said, it does seem that hope has been rekindled, at least for this week. Martin Sheen, how do you see what's going on now in real life and uh, sort of as a, as a postscript to what you all hoped and predicted uh, back when West Wing was on the air? Well, uh, and clearly, there is a groundswell, and... It has captured the imagination of the whole nation, and no one could possibly have anticipated it, and uh, least of all the Republicans. And uh, with all due respects, uh, I would offer just a few words of advice to uh, Mr. Trump. Donald, you're going to need a bigger boat. That's what's happening. There is a tidal wave sweeping across the country, and it's lifting everybody up with this optimism and joy and hope something that we could not possibly have imagined uh, until very recently. And so uh, we're all, frankly, just happy as Larry that finally the dam is broken and it's OK to, to, to join, the, uh, join the wave. So, of course, you speak from a particular perspective and one that you all created and showed the world during the West Wing. Um, some call it a liberal fantasy. Melissa, Melissa Fitzgerald, what I want to ask you is about the book that you've written about it. Uh, What's Next? And it has a long sub, <laughs> subtitle. What did you hear all these years later from the cast, from the crew, from the others who took part in this incredible series? Well, I think we are at a moment of great hope, of joy, as Martin said, of optimism. And we all felt so fortunate to have been part of a show that envisioned a, a government that was filled by smart, committed people who went to work every day trying to do the most good for the most people. And we have heard from the fans and people who have bought the book, because it's been out for about a week now, and we've gotten such a flood of positive response from people saying that this book is meeting the moment that we are in now. And that has been thrilling and exciting, that we are in this moment of great optimism, joy, and hope, which was really what The West Wing was about and why I believe it caught such fire. So, look, I'm going to play a little clip. And, uh, you know, it, it talks about what's next, the origin of that phrase or that question, which is also the title of your book. Um, here we go. Let's flash back for a moment. Sam, if we win in Illinois, do we have a shot at California and New York? If we win in Illinois, we're going to run the table. Well, that's it, then. And we've saved people the trouble of voting. What's next? Our, our point is that it's... I understood the point. We're going to South Carolina to set up Illinois. When I ask what's next, it means I'm ready to move on to other things. So, what's next? We're done. Fantastic. I mean, it, it sums up so much, Martin Sheen. That was the late John Spencer, also, uh, obviously, in that, in that clip. Tell me about what's next. I mean, you sort of explained it there, but how did that become the sort of the, the, the iconic phrase? Well, he would never wanted to, uh, to look behind him. He was always looking forward. So he, he, when he said what, what's next, he's saying to his staff and to anyone within earshot that we've, we've, I got what you're kind of telling me, uh, what you're telling me, and I'm looking forward, and I'm carrying what you told me with me. So what's next? 
So he got it, in, a, in other words. Didn't have to have endless, endless he long meetings. It, yeah. yeah. Yeah, look, I want to ask yeah. you both. I'll, I'll start with you, Melissa. So as we've established, the West Wing was an incredibly... It's like comfort viewing. It, it gave people a sense of hope, a sense of can do, a sense that politics was there to make people's lives better. And things that came later were very cynical, whether it's the House of Cards, whether it's the English one in the thick of it, uh, Veep even, funny but quite cynical. Yeah. Um, how do you account for the success of the hopeful version, Melissa, when you look back, you know, 25 years later? I believe I am a hopeful person at, at, at my core, and I think most people are. We want that. We want to know that our government is there for us. We do own it. It is ours, and we, we have to build it. We have to fight for it, and I know that people have that hope in them, and we need that, and I think that was part of the success of the show. And <laughs>